Hi everyone, my name is Kevin Doherty and I'm super excited to be sharing some of my work with you all today as part of this RSS 2023 workshop on spectral graph theoretic methods for estimation and control. Uh, first, I just wanted to uh, give a big thank you to the organizers of RSS 2023 who gave us the opportunity to host this workshop in the first place. Um, this is really something that myself and the other workshop organizers have been talking about doing for a long time and so I'm very thankful that we're finally able to make it happen this year. I'm sad I couldn't be in Korea to see everyone in person, but I hope everyone's having fun at the workshop, uh, and I'll be on Zoom, of course, to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, also, you should feel free to reach out if you're interested in this work and want to chat or have further questions after the workshop. Uh, I'd, I'd love to, to chat more. Now, the specific work that I'm going to talk about today is called MAC, which is an algorithm that we developed for graph sparsification by maximizing algebraic connectivity. And this is part of an ongoing project that also includes my collaborators, Alan Papalia, Yewei Huang, David Rosen, Brendan Englot, and John Leonard. And one of the main applications that motivated our uh, investigations into this graph sparsification problem and spectral graph theory to begin with was the problem of long-term robot navigation. And the common pose graph slam paradigm essentially models the pose of a robot at each point in time as a node in a graph, and the measured relative transforms between those poses are the edges in that graph. So in the case of visual slam, we'll introduce new edges between poses in the graph whenever the robot obser observes the same features across different images. And the accumulation of those new measurements will induce density in these pose graphs, which we can see here on the right, where I'm visualizing a trajectory of an underwater robot that's just performing a standard lawnmower survey of a coral reef. And I'm highlighting in green these potential loop closures, where there's significant overlap in the robot's field of view at different points in time. And what we can see is that as the robot navigates, there are a lot of these potential uh, loop closure opportunities. And in principle, this should be a good thing, right? The more measurements that we can make, the more accurately we should be able to localize the robot. But unfortunately, in practice, this density directly impacts the computation and memory requirements of SLAM while having really only marginal improvements in state estimation accuracy. And so we'd really like to not be doing any more work than we have to. Uh, so uh, we should really be um, pruning observations that are essentially redundant. And we need to do this efficiently, right? Uh, because the whole point is to save in computational uh, expense of doing SLAM in the first place. So in this talk, I'm going to provide a little bit of background on this problem of graph sparsification that we're going to consider, and I'll formalize this problem using some of the ideas from spectral graph theory. And then I'll present our algorithm, which is called MAC, as I mentioned, and was originally presented at IROS 2022, uh, which efficiently computes sparse subgraphs that aim to preserve specific connectivity properties of the original graph. Now MAC itself operates on any graph, it's not tailored specifically to SLAM in any way, but that is going to be our primary application of interest for this talk. And finally, I'll give some exciting new results and some features that we plan to release publicly soon. I'll also mention that the MAC algorithm is already available through a Python library, and I'll provide a link to that at the end of the talk. As I mentioned, the application area of interest for this work is in pose graph SLAM, where we want to estimate a set of robot poses from some noisy measurements of their pairwise relative transforms. And so this corresponds to an optimization problem that can be parameterized by a graph whose nodes are those robot poses and whose edges are relative pose measurements. And that optimization problem is shown on the screen here as a minimization uh, over the set of rotations and translations for each pose for the subjective function uh, um, that, that penalizes essentially deviation from any of these pairwise relative uh, poses. And the general idea that we're going to consider in this work is to design a sparse subgraph, which in some sense is going to best approximate the original dense graph. So there are some natural questions that immediately arise. Uh, first, what is the appropriate figure of merit to select among the possible subgraphs of our graph? And second, even if we choose what the right figure of merit should be in this setting, how do we find the best subgraph according to that criterion? How do we operationalize this? And so to address the first question, oh, we need a bit of a quick primer on spectral graph theory. I'm sure by this point, everyone at the workshop has encountered some of these concepts, but uh, I'm going to give a recap here just of some of the concepts that are most relevant to this work. Now, as you've probably already seen today, a central object of study in spectral graph theory is this graph Laplacian. This is a symmetric matrix with non-zero entries that are in correspondence with the edges in the graph. So we can decompose the graph Laplacian into a sum of edgewise Laplacian matrices shown here. A graph Laplacian is always positive semi-definite with its smallest eigenvalue being zero. And the eigenvalues of the Laplacian have been directly linked to key properties of the estimation problems that we uh, tried, that we're interested in solving that are parameterized by the corresponding graph. And in particular, design criteria studied in the theory of optimal experimental design like D-opt and E-opt, which are shown here, can be written in terms of the spectrum of the graph Laplacian. 
And so uh, here the deopt criterion can be thought of as a kind of determinant, just excluding that zero eigenvalue. And the eopt criterion is just uh, the smallest non-zero eigenvalue of the graph Laplacian. In this work, our goal is going to be to optimize specifically this second eigenvalue of the Laplacian matrix, or the first non-zero eigenvalue of the Laplacian matrix. This, this eigenvalue is actually so important that we gave it uh, a name, in fact, two names, the algebraic connectivity or the Fiedler value of the graph. There are a few reasons that we're interested in this particular parameter. First, uh, computing the algebraic connectivity can be done relatively efficiently since it requires computation only of a single eigenvalue, as opposed to the determinant, which requires a matrix decomposition in general. And second, and importantly, uh, in several recent works, some of which are actually by folks at the workshop today, uh, the algebraic connectivity has specifically been found to control both the best achievable error for SLAM problems through kramer rao lower bounds, as well as the worst case error for a given estimator for SLAM. So this seems like a very important number to be considering, and this is going to be our sort of figure of merit for subgraphs in turn. And then the question is, how do we find the subgraph that maximizes this algebraic connectivity uh, quantity? So to formulate this problem, one sort of reasonable approach would be to associate with each edge a weight that's either zero or one, corresponding to whether we're going to keep or discard that edge. And then we'd like to find the subgraph containing exactly k edges that maximizes the algebraic connectivity. And this is the optimization problem that's depicted on the screen here. Unfortunately, the combinatorial nature of this problem makes it challenging to solve. And formally, this is an NP-hard problem in the worst case requiring us to examine all possible subgraphs with k edges. And it turns out that the difficulty of this problem really just boils down to this constraint that we have to make a hard decision whether we're going to keep or discard an edge. So one way we can maybe try to make this problem tractable is to simply relax this constraint. We'll throw it out and we'll effectively allow for soft assignments to edges. So rather than these weights being either zero or one as binary variables, they can be between zero or one in this case. And as I said before, since the, uh, the Laplacian decomposes into a sort of sum of edge-wise edge, uh, Laplacians, you can kind of see how these weights appear in the summation uh, for that Laplacian on the screen now. It turns out that this actually simplifies the problem considerably. The algebraic connectivity uh, turns out to be a concave function of the edge weights, which makes the resulting relaxation equivalent to a convex optimization problem. And we like this because it makes it amenable to standard techniques for solving convex optimization problems. And in particular, to solve this relaxation, Mac uses a subgradient approach, which is based on Frank Wolf. For those of you who aren't uh, previously familiar with it, the Frank Wolf method proceeds in an iterative fashion where we first optimize a linearized version of the uh, objective function over the same feasible set, and then we take a step in the corresponding direction. And we just, uh, essentially just rinse and repeat this process. And it turns out that in our case, the linear program in the first step of the Frank Wolf method actually admits a simple closed form solution, which makes Mac simple to implement, fast, and highly scalable. And then given a solution to the relaxed problem, we can simply pick off the k largest components of our weight vector, and these are gonna be the edges that we keep in our sparse subgraph. And uh, this in turn gives us an approximate solution to the original problem. So we can think of this as kind of a rounding procedure back to the feasible set for that original problem. And finally, since this approach is based on a relaxation of the original problem, comparing the connectivity between the uh, rounded and unrounded estimates gives us an immediate post hoc suboptimality guarantee on the quality of the rounded solution. Qualitative results on benchmark PoseGraph SLAM datasets demonstrate that Mac recovers high quality sparse subgraphs while keeping just a fraction of the measurements. And so here I'm showing results for the city 10K benchmark dataset, which has 10,000 nodes and just over 10,000 loop closure edges. And the SLAM solution computed using the full graph is over on the right in black. And we can see that Mac on the top produces qualitatively better results than a naive baseline pictured on the bottom, which doesn't uh, consider connectivity and instead is just picking the K measurements with the largest edge weights. And quantitatively, Mac produces well-connected graphs that preserve the quality of SLAM solutions. In the plot here on the left, we're showing the algebraic connectivity of graphs obtained by our method in blue and by the naive method in red. And on the x-axis, we're showing the percent of loop closure edges added, so this is essentially varying that budget parameter k in our problem formulation. And what we can see is that across the board, Mac is giving much better connected graphs than this naive baseline. And you can also see uh, in this plot, the suboptimality gap that I mentioned before, which is this shaded blue region. And we can see from that region that in this case, as long as we don't remove too many edges, we actually obtain a relaxation that is empirically tight, which is actually a, a pretty interesting result, I think. 
And here we're comparing the error of slam solutions computed using the sparse graphs obtained from each method with the slam solution com computed using the full graph. And so we can see here that by preserving the algebraic connectivity, Mac is also preserving the quality of slam solutions, even keeping a relatively small fraction of the measurements. And crucially, we show that on this reasonably sized data set, we can compute solutions using essentially unoptimized Python code in around two seconds. I'll contextualize this result a little bit more toward the end of the talk, but this is, uh, happens to be much faster than similar methods to date for solving these kinds of problems. And here, I'm only showing results from one data set, but we evaluated Mac on several different benchmark SLAM data sets, and the results for our complete evaluation can be found in the paper that uh, I'll link to at the end of the talk. Okay, so, so far, I've shown work uh, just that was included as part of our IROS 2022 submission on Mac, but now I would, I'd really like to shift gears and talk a little bit about work that's been done since then, including some brand new uh, results that I'm very excited to show off today. And first, since we've released Mac, others have actually picked it up and applied it to new problems, which is, I think, very exciting. Uh, I wanted to highlight one of those applications here, which is called Swarm Slam. And so this year, Lejoie and others adapted Mac for application to communication-constrained multi-robot slam. And one important question uh, for their problem was how to select which loop closures to share with other robots over a network while respecting some communication budget. And their idea was actually to use Mac essentially to identify and then share specifically the subset of loop closures that would maximize the algebraic connectivity of the graph. I thought this was a really cool approach. Uh, I'm very excited about what new applications folks will come up with outside of the original problem with post-graph sparsification. As I mentioned, Mac is a, really a general algorithm for sparsifying graphs by preserving algebraic connectivity. Uh, so it's not like particular to SLAM in any, in any way. Um, and I'm, I'm very excited to see what people come up with. Uh, I've also provided a link to their paper and code uh, on the screen here. I definitely recommend checking it out if you're interested in these kinds of techniques. And uh, second, I wanted to share that we have a few significant updates that are coming to the Mac project soon. So recently we implemented as a baseline the state-of-the-art greedy ESP algorithm, which is a technique for sparsification based on de-optimality. And this gives us, I think, a more meaningful point of comparison for solution quality and computation time than this really simple, naive baseline that we looked at in our original presentation of this work. And we also came up with a significantly improved rounding procedure uh, and made Mac even faster with a new subspace recycling method for computing those eigenvectors and eigenvalues of the Laplacian. Uh, but today, I'm going to specifically give a little bit more detail on this new rounding procedure, and then I'll show off some of the exciting new results that it enabled, including uh, the comparisons with the greedy ESP baseline that I mentioned. And so just to contextualize our updated rounding procedure, it's important to know that one common approach for rounding solutions to relaxations, like the one that we consider in Mac, is randomized rounding, where we treat the output weights as a set of marginal probabilities, and we sample from that probability distribution. In our case, those weights are going to tell us something about the marginal probability that an edge is going to be included in the sparse output graph from Mac. But unfortunately, if we naively attempt to sample each edge independently, this doesn't ensure that we satisfy the edge budget constraint. And so the solution that we get might not actually be feasible for the original problem. And this is one reason that we actually avoided randomized rounding procedures in our initial implementation of Mac. It wasn't clear how to do randomized rounding in a way that respected the constraints of this original uh, problem specification. Uh, however, we recently sort of uh, discovered and then implemented for Mac a systematic, sampling, uh, a systematic sampling procedure, which was originally developed by William Maddow in 1949, and actually addresses exactly the problem of sampling from a distribution with desired marginals while ensuring that we select exactly k elements. So this is a really exciting find for us. Uh, the algorithm itself is depicted here. I'm not going to step through the details of it now in the interest of time, uh, and instead I'm just going to show you some of the cool results that this enabled. And so it actually turns out that this kind of simple trick of randomized rounding significantly improves the results from Mac. And so here I'm showing quantitative results for a benchmark 3D grid data set. And what we can see is that this rounding procedure with the results shown in purple significantly improves the connectivity of our sparse subgraphs over the previous version, which I'm depicting here in blue. And moreover, we find that greedy ESP depicted in orange provides very good results in terms of algebraic connectivity, which is kind of an interesting result because it actually optimizes it, the determinant, which is, a, you know, while related to the E-optimality criterion, still ultimately a different objective. And these results translate almost directly to the actual metric error of SLAM solutions computed from these graphs, where both greedy ESP and Mac with this updated randomized rounding procedure significantly outperform the naive method and uh, the previous version of Mac. And finally, in terms of the computational expense, there's essentially no difference computationally between the previous rounding procedure and this new random sampling method, meaning that uh, this rounding procedure can essentially improve results for Mac without any added computational overhead. 
which is kind of nice. Uh, and more significantly, Mac is actually between one and two orders of magnitude faster in this particular example than greedy ESP while obtaining almost identical results. And here's what all of this looks like visually, right? The quantitative stuff is, is great, but what does this actually look like? Um, so here I'm depicting results on three different benchmark data sets for four different methods that we examined. A naive baseline is shown in red. The greedy ESP uh, method is again in orange. Mac with this original deterministic rounding procedure is depicted in blue. And Mac with the new rounding procedure is uh, in purple. And one observation is that this previous rounding scheme for Mac seems to be especially sensitive to graphs that possess symmetries. And this is most obvious, I think, in the, uh, the 3D grid example, where it actually fails somewhat dramatically. The randomized rounding procedure, in contrast, I think seems much more ro uh, robust to these sorts of scenarios. And qualitatively, we kind of see again that, that greedy ESP and our improved Mac procedure produce very similar results despite optimizing different criteria. Um, at the same time, Mac still retains the computational uh, advantages that are afforded in part by the simplicity of the e-optimality criterion, which allow it to be much, allow it to be much faster in practice than uh, optimizing this d-opt criterion. We also evaluated these methods using real data from three sessions of the University of Michigan North Campus dataset. Each session here is a single traversal over roughly the same area. And uh, to do this, we ran DiscoSlam, which is a LiDAR-based SLAM method to obtain a pose graph, and then we applied Mac to that graph. And here in our visualization, we've offset the different sessions along the z-axis, and we're showing intersession loop closures in green. So the naive baseline uh, on top, uh, which ignores graph topology, we can see produces a poorly connected graph between the sessions, and this in turn leads to a bad estimate of the relative pose between the different mapping sessions. On the other hand, on the bottom, uh, you can see the results applying Mac, which uh, reproduce the trajectory of the robot much more faithfully. You can see that the uh, different sessions have very similar trajectories uh, in that case. And this was a really exciting result to us because uh, here we've actually made no special effort to like avoid outliers or any of the things that, that you know, uh, break these kinds of methods in, uh, in practice with real data. Uh, we just sort of took the graph that we got from DiscoSlam, we threw it into Mac, and this uh, still obtained good solutions. And in fact, to mitigate outliers, it was enough to simply use a robust Cauchy cost function for loop closure edges, which was already the default behavior for uh, the DiscoSlam LiDAR SLAM procedure. And so just to summarize, uh, in this talk, I've uh, presented Mac, which is an algorithm for fast e-optimal graph sparsification with application, in this case, to pose graph slam. Our algorithm admits uh, formal post hoc performance guarantees on the connectivity of the solutions that it provides, uh, and we've made available an open source Python implementation uh, at the link shown here and at the QR code. Our paper is also available at the other QR code shown on the screen. Uh, and I'd like to just thank you all for your attention, and I'm happy to take any questions that you might have over Zoom now. Thanks. So questions? Yeah, do you want to? So we have a question. Yeah. Hey, Kevin. Thanks for the very nice talk, and uh, super, super cool to see the uh, the new results from the map project. So that's like that's really cool stuff. Um, I did have one question about some of the stuff that you mentioned in terms of the numerical behavior of uh, the original version of Mac. Um, so, do you have a sense for why it is that uh, Mac's performance seems to degrade in in the presence of symmetry? Uh, yeah, it's a it's a great question. It's it's something that. Um, that I think is a, it's a curious behavior, but, but um, maybe has something to do with the fact that um, in these cases where there are symmetries, uh, we'll get an interior point solution to the relaxation where uh, maybe a lot of these uh, weights end up being kind of similar. And so um, maybe if we were to, to break the symmetry by anchoring one of those uh, weights, either to zero or one, we would get um, a solution that, that sort of, um, is forced to, to make harder decisions about uh, edges than, than uh, the solution that we get. Um, but by doing this deterministic rounding procedure, just selecting the sort of top K edges, um, that may not be enough to essentially disambiguate between these uh, situations. And so by doing this randomized rounding procedure, we're sort of like forcing some kind of disambiguation um, rather than um, picking configurations that, that might, um, might be parts of good configurations, but we're mixing them up in a way that, that ends up being kind of unsatisfactory. Awesome, thanks. Yeah, that's really, really cool stuff to see. Thanks. Any other question? Yeah, so we have another question here. 
Thank you very much for your great talk. Uh, I have well, just one question. Uh, it was uh, very interesting uh, to see how you extended the previous version uh, by, uh, uh, by handling the rounding. Uh, but another aspect is depending on how you uh, approximate the, the, uh, the algorithm, uh, you may have different like uh, approximation ratio. Uh, do you have any, any, any kind of like a command or any suggestions how you can actually even uh, provide better uh, guarantee approximation ratio by handling the approximation ratio? Yeah, so that's, that's a, I, yeah, that's a, that's a great question. It's something that we've thought about. It, it's, it's kind of an open question whether there's, whether this is this uh, gap between the integral solutions that we obtain and the unrounded solutions, is this uh, sort of a fundamental property of these, uh, of these types of problems? Or is this just something that comes out of the optimization procedures that, that we happen to develop? Um, and it's, we don't know the answer. Uh, it would be something that's very interesting to investigate. Like, is there a fundamental integrality gap for these particular problems? And I know this is something that's been studied uh, somewhat thoroughly for uh, linear programs, for example. Um, but here we have uh, a, a nonlinear program, right? Because the function that we're optimizing is an eigenvalue of this Laplacian matrix. Um, so I think it's a very interesting question. I don't know the answer, um, but you know, if anyone if anyone figures it out, I'd be very curious. Thanks. Um, yeah, there is another question. Um, Hi, Kevin. Thanks for the great talk. I have a question. Uh, if I'm dealing with like uh, dynamic graphs where like some some stuff stay, stays the same, some stuff changes, uh, can I use your approach? And if so, what, what do you recommend? Because it's like a large graph, like a multi-agent system that changes over time. So thanks. Um, yeah, I guess it would depend on whether or not uh, this would be an appropriate algorithm to use. I think would depend on what you sort of want out of it, um, right? Uh, so certainly you can uh, you can put a dynamic graph into into Mac and and you, and it'll it'll sparsify that graph uh, to the specified budget constraints if that's sort of the behavior that you're looking for. Um, we've we've already done some experiments actually. Um, I didn't show them today, but uh, we've done some tests where we've actually run um, Mac in an, in a sort of incremental setting where actually we have a, a graph that's growing dynamically over time. And uh, what we want is maybe to uh, ensure that the, um, for just as an example, uh, to ensure that the number of loop closure edges in the, the graph obtained um, by our SLAM system never exceeds a certain value. And so uh, in this sense, we're like encouraging a SLAM system to, to maintain a parsimonious representation. Uh, and Mac works perfectly fine for that. We essentially just um, add edges dynamically or add nodes dynamically uh, as the, the graph needs to grow. And then, um, you know, we can we call Mac in a, in a sort of batch fashion uh, whenever we want to sparsify the graph. Um, and you can play other sort of computational tricks if you're concerned about efficiency, like by initializing Mac with a solution that's sort of constructed, constructed from maybe a previous iteration of, of that problem. Um, so there are all kinds of cool things to do that might depend more on the specifics of the problem that you're interested in. Um, but certainly you could apply Mac in the setting of dynamic graphs. Great, thank you. So I'll ask a very quick question, Kevin. Um, do you have, so the complexity pair iteration of your Frank Wolf method, I think that looked very light. Um, but do you have a special trick to initialize uh, Frank Wolf that leads to these um, fast convergence? No, in fact, we're choosing very bad initial uh, solutions. Uh, it, it, it's likely that if we were to be more clever about that, uh, we would get significantly better results. Um, but we made no significant effort to initialize these solutions. In fact, what we do uh, is uh, th that naive baseline that I showed uh, that just picks off the, the, the K edges with the largest weights. It's totally topology agnostic. That is the solution that we use as our initial guess for Frank Wolf. Um, and sometimes, uh, like you, you may have caught it in, in some of those plots, um, the connectivity of the solutions provided by the naive method can be very poor. And so we're really choosing a very bad initial guess often. Um, and then I, I didn't mention, you know, the numerics of like how we, how many iterations of Frank Wolf we do uh, in practice. I think we set the number to like 20 and that has worked for every graph that we've tried for SLAM uh, so far. Um, so we've been, we've been very satisfied with that. We haven't made much effort to like optimize the, the, the performance. Um, but yeah, there's certainly a lot of interesting questions that, that we could, uh, we could think about addressing along those lines, like how to better initialize the Frank Wolf method. I see. Thank you very much.
Thank um, you. So let's thank Kevin again.